Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Welcome to WHW Monday. Tony Schiavone and Conrad Thompson. Jim Crockett for Starcade, 605 NWA. TV title, Cajun Omni, the Bunkhouse Stampede. Flair and Horseman, Garvin, Bogey, Magnum, Dusty, Express Tag Team. Turner bought in Mid-South Joy World Championship Wrestling. Talking about the great years of World Championship Wrestling, the NWA and Jim Crockett Promotions. Tony and first what they win, look Shivani's back again. World title split off, center stage, Bischoff. Disney, Hogan, and Nitro, New World Order, and the Crow. Thunder Russo, Arquette Champ, Vinny Mac, simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad, not your classy podcast. Watch a lot, try not to laugh, lowest rules, cat back. This wasn't the initial plan, Tom Ziggs a good looking man. Klondike Bill, make a chair. Tommy, you come over here. What happened, win? WHW Monday. And now, let's go to the ring, and here's your co-host, hey, hey. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Life is good. How are you doing? Man, better than I deserve. Happier than a puppy with two Peters. It's football season. The Braves are in the World Series. A lot of stuff to be happy about right now. Yeah, a lot going on. A lot going on, and we are certainly excited about being able to relive 1986. It's uh, it's a great time. It, the fall is always a great time, as you know. Love it. We're getting into the holidays now, past Geico Ween, if I can shamelessly call it that. Why are you doing that? Well, we're past it. Oh, okay. So we're past Halloween, so to speak, and we're into the holidays, which obviously you, you're you like me. You love this time of, of year, and... World series ending up college football last couple of weeks or a few weeks of the regular season during the month of November. And then we get into the championships and holiday. So it's all good, but it's great being with you. And I want to say a very special uh, thank you to uh, Rob Humphrey and everybody in at C4, the cherry capital comic con C4 in Traverse city for making me seem so welcome, feel so welcome. A lot of fun there. Where in the world is that Traverse city, Michigan? Oh, never been it. Oh, well, uh, if you're not from that part of the country, you, you may not know that much, much about it, but it is a resort town. Who goes to and Traverse I, city for, a uh, I, I would think, I would think a lot of people in Michigan do it's right on Lake Michigan. Oh, okay. You buried the lead. It's on Lake Michigan. I got it. There you go. It's a, it's a bay. I stayed at the grand Traverse resort which is very, very nice. And there's a lot going on there during the, uh, you know, during the peak season, a lot of people come up there and Tony, spend some time. Are you shilling right now? Yeah, but I, I am kind of for Traverse city because it's a nice place. Nice community. A lot of people I'd never been 
I guess I've never been north of Grand Rapids. So it was pretty cool. Is it true that Lois, uh, recently had a doctor's visit? Yes. And, and what did you discover in Lois's She's, most recent doctor visit? That she is, uh, as much full of shit as anything else. We better need to I'm, be quiet. Cause I, I hear her close here. So I'm sorry. Say what now? She, what now? What's going on with her? She okay. Lois. Never mind. Just whisper. Are you on the, are you on the phone? Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. That she's full of shit. She's on the phone. <laughs> now then Taylor, your hair looks nice. Your hair looks nice. Good. I think you should just do a more hushed whisper tone, but why, why is she full of shit? What's going on? She had a, she had a colonoscopy as old people normally do. Whoa. As I like to say, a lot to unpack there. <laughs> yeah. But she, she came through it like a trooper. It took quite a while. And then she had to, you know, kind of rest a little bit. And I had, to, because she's sedated, heavily sedated, uh, I had to drive her home. And so there you but go. Isn't she normally heavily sedated? Heavily medicated. Yeah. Yeah. My apologies. So how's that boathouse going? Well, we, uh, we're not, we're not really too deep on the boathouse, but the actual lake house, boy, we got some progress now, baby. Oh, really? You it's know, not done yet. This whole supply know- chain thing has been a hassle. Really? So it's like you go to order the stuff and they say one thing and then it winds. So, oh, it'll be in two weeks. Well, it's 10 weeks. That sort of thing. That's all bullshit. You know, that's supply chain stuff. Well, here's that's just what- a that's just a way to get more money out of you. That's all that is. Well, I just know that we had contractors lined up and then we uh-huh. ordered the stuff and we were told one thing about the stuff and then the stuff mm-hmm. came way late. And by then the contractors are working on another job. So we got to wait till they finish that one to come back to ours. So it's one of those hurry up and wait routines. I got that. Yeah. Where the I cabinet understand. guy was waiting on the hardwood guy and the hardwood guy's waiting on the sheetrock guy and the plumber has COVID and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, are you, are you you making sure you got the gym downstairs? I know for sure, but are you just paying all this out of pocket? Is this the, what's the strategy on? Cause you told us last week you were definitely gonna, um, be spending some of your newfound fortune on the home place. Is that from your, uh, your colored pencil, uh, routine you're selling, or is that from podcast money? Or is that that sweet, sweet Tony Khan money? Where are we, where are we dumping our assets these days? Where, where's it coming from? I guess it's coming from, uh, as always from podcast money. Oh, so podcast money is allocated for renovations. That's right. It's it's, we have a, yes, I, I was going to tell you, I was going to give you the whole spiel, but I, that's kind of, you know, I don't want to let everybody know my finances and everything, but. Oh, I, hey, nobody knows that better than me. I once asked for a goal. And you told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> you once asked for a what? <laughs> when you, when we were trying to pay for that damn wedding back in the day, I yeah. said, Hey, what's the goal? Give me a goal and I'll go get it. And you said, I don't discuss personal finances. <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'm a sales guy. I just wanted a number. Like, tell me what number that, to hit. And I'll make it happen. To be very honest. That's not what you said. You said, Hey, motherfucker. Something like that. And I would, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't trying to get in your business. I'm just like, no, I, I know you weren't. I want to sell you. for you. That's all. Yeah. We're pretty excited about 1986. I'm getting a lot of feedback from a lot of people about, thanks to you very much. And I know we've, we've hammered on this issue many times on uh, future podcasts, but a lot of people say, thanks for going back and helping us relive 1986 because it was a great year. And, and now as we moving through 1986, we're getting closer to, Starcade, 1986, Night of the Skywalkers, which has a lot of stories in itself. But we're having a lot of fun doing all this and appreciate everybody being with us and watching along with us and listening to our silly shit. And I got a lot of uh, people who came up to me at Traverse City said, hey, love the con- love the uh, podcast with you and Conrad. So, Well, man, that's nice. So if you haven't already, get your cock out. Pull up uh, season two, episode 45 of world championship wrestling. It's November 15th, 1986 mm-hmm. season two, episode 45. Uh, we're a little bit ahead, but don't worry. We've got big plans for you. You haven't asked me about tattoos during oh. this episode. Yes. 
Wait a minute. Is there a third one? There's not a third one. However, I would like to put it out there that I am open to suggestions on a third tattoo. Okay. I, I, I want to make a recommendation. Have you seen everybody except you? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Have you seen curb your enthusiasm? Are you a fan of that show? Oddly enough, you would say that because I am now finishing up season nine. I got way behind on it. I know season 11 has started. It's so good. Is it not? Uh, it's, there's nothing like it. I, I was trying to explain it to Lois. I said, there is nobody actually like Larry David. He is one of a kind, a yes. comedic genius. I mean, right. he can make something out of nothing. It's so great. Right. right. But his character, uh, or there's a character on the show named Leon who doesn't love <laughs> Leon, but Leon, if you've noticed gets different necklaces and I have to admit, I miss this and stupid ass Dave Silva put it on my radar. And yeah. <laughs> he has different ones every time. <laughs> you, have you seen the lamping episode yet? Lamping? Yes. Mm -hmm. He has a lamping chain it says lamping, <laughs> but my favorite and, and Dave Silva's favorite is I gets mine. I think Tony Schiavone getting a tattoo as if it were a necklace. So it'll be hidden by a shirt that just says I gets mine, buddy. You show mm. that to rebel. Mm. <sighs> Her fiance mm. don't stand a chance. Mm. You're going to slide not, right in there. Like Atlanta Braves. That would not be the reason to get another tattoo. Oh, you only get tattoos to impress chicks. That's why you get tattoos. No, you don't. No, yeah, you don't. You get no, no. Why did Maybe. you get a tattoo? I just, because I wanted to have bug on my shoulder forever. Who would see it? Nobody. Then why do it? I just, it, it just. I don't know. It, it just felt right. Bug doesn't That's, even know it's there. Do you know that? No, he doesn't know it's there. I get it. I understand. I understand. But so, you, you know who does know it's there? Who? Ladies. Oh, he loves his dog. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a what? You, are, oh, you're you a dog are person. Oh, he hey. passed away. <laughs> My favorite of Leon is when he said, I can be your assistant. Phone rings. He said, Larry David's office. What the fuck is up? <laughs> <laughs> love someone answer an office phone like that. <laughs> I got to tell you, I am on fire that we're what two weeks away, three weeks away from the release of butts and seats. Is that right? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And I know that it's been, uh, it's been very good on Amazon, man. Wow. What an, what an exciting time. I, I, I talked about this the other night, the other day when we had a panel at Traverse city yep. and, and this, this moment actually happened. So I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm looking, I got a stack of the, uh, of the ash cans, the, the preview editions, which is like one chapter each that you can get. Uh, and, and I'm looking at the stacks that, uh, source point media had of the actual book that they had available there. Bobblehead. All my pens, stack of uh, pictures for autographs, and I'm looking at that, and it hits me that last year at that time, I was in Jacksonville doing Georgia, Florida, and most every weekend since '03, I have been doing Georgia, Florida, and it just hit me how crazy my life has been in a mere span of what four or five years. Yeah. Just, you, you just can't, you can't predict it. So this I've combined the, the magazine or the graphic novel, butts and seats, the Tony Schiavone story with you getting to know me and resurrecting my career with the podcast and hooking in with AEW and source point press and Mike Dawkins and holy shit, everybody. It's just, it's, it's hard to process sometimes it really is. It's hard to process. Sometimes I sit there and I look like I wanted, I looked at the stuff the other day. I'm just staring at it thinking, how do I verbalize this? What's happened in my life? Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to, it really is. And I'm one of the people that's supposed to verbalize things for a living. Maybe I should have Excalibur verbalize it because he's better at it than I am. I don't know, but it's, it's crazy. And, uh, I just, 
<sighs> Gotta take a deep breath sometime. You're in trouble. Why? Turn around. You know you're on camera. No. Yeah, you are. Hey, Lois. I don't have it on. Uh, Conrad says hi. Hi, Conrad. Hello. Welcome to the show. We're excited to have you. Uh, gee, thanks. I'm. It's it's exciting to be here. Let me leave. <laughs> But, Tony, you don't have it up. How do I know I'm on camera? Well, you're going to enjoy it when I do this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Look at her hiding. She looks like uh, on Home Improvement, the neighbor Wilson. Yeah. yeah. That's her. She's the neighbor Wilson. That's she, me. She's got a, she got a very tough thing to, to uh, decision to make now, right? She turns around, lets everybody see her big ass, or she just stays here. I'm good with either. Time. I'm good with either one. <laughs> yeah. You want me to stop the video as you walk away? Would you like me to do that, sweetie? Hello? I don't care what you do. All right. I'm just leaving. I've got to lay down. I okay. don't feel well. She, she had a tube stuck up her ass today. <laughs> Did you hear what she said? Did you hear what she just said? And it was not anal sex either. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> so anyway, crazy life, huh? <laughs> There's an example of it right there. Oh, it has been a crazy life, a wonderful life. <sighs> Holiday time. That's one of the great movies, but a, a, a crazy life. Tony, is it just me or did we get through those ads today in record time? Yeah, man, you are, <laughs> you, you, you knocked them out, man. Well, the deal you is, you know, we got, we get some complaints every now and again that says you should just do them all up front. Well, I mean, I kind of did today. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> we sure, sh I'm sorry. You sure did. <laughs> I, I do want to mention, uh, there's never an ad over at adfreeshows.com. And of course you get lots of bonus content over at uh, patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. But without further ado, I think we should get this party on the road after a lowest run in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how this day could get any better. Let's go to season two, episode 45, November 15th, 1986. If you got a countdown, I'm ready when you is. All right. Time now for the countdown. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. And you're listening to something to wrestle with. Oh, wait. Um, sorry. I'm not Conrad Thompson. I'm Kevin. And this is what happened when with Tony Schiavone and uh so I guess I got to do this countdown and we'll go with uh we'll, go, we'll just make it simple three two one play So this is Ronnie Garvin getting attacked by the Midnight Express, and I can only think this is an angle for the Road Warriors. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, and I'm showing wrong. Big Bubba climbing to the top. And then right. we get that badass entrance. World Championship Wrestling. Bringing you great wrestling action. Sanctioned by the NWA, National Wrestling Alliance. All right, Tony, we just saw the Midnight Express with Big Bubba and Jim Cornette try to take out the hands of Stone Ron Garvin. That's one of the matches signed for Starcade, and we're going to get to you in just one second, okay? I'm just listening to you say all kinds okay. of nice things. Now, today, me. we're going to see the workout on the scaffold from the Midnight Express yes, with Jim Corda. Now, Starcade, the 12 matches are, first of all, a tag team match. Don and Rocky Cronuttal against Tim Horner and Nelson Rowe. You also see superstar Bill Dundee take on Sam Houston. Also, another big tag team match is Baron Von Raschke and Hector Guerrero go up against the team of the Barbarian and Shaska. Another match, Brad Armstrong against gorgeous Jimmy Garvin with Precious. The Indian strap match, Chief Wahoo McDaniel against Ravishing Rick Rude along with Paul Jones. Also, for the U.S. tag team title, no disqualification. 
qualification this time. It's the Kansas Jayhawks against the champions, Ivan Koloff and Crusher Khrushchev. You'll also see these matches in a cage, the Rock and Roll Express against Olin Arn Anderson for the world tag team title. Hair versus hair. Jimmy Light against Paul Jones with Big Mama chance for her hair to get shaved if Jimmy Valley loses the match. And the Raging Bull be high above the ring in a cage. Also a match for the world TV title. First blood match. Dusty Rhodes, Tully Blanchard, Ric Flair defends the world title against Nikita Koloff. And then the Knight of the Skywalkers. Ask me why I'm smiling. Why are you smiling? Because these because, guys are going to get 25 feet yeah. in the air. In one match, one match, we're going to be rid of the Road Warriors once and for all. Never have to wrestle them. Never have to look at them. Never have to contend with them again. One match. Knight of the Skywalkers. Starcade 86 and the Road Warriors are going to be finished. You're going to see the workout later on. But right now, you're going to see them live. Feast your eyes and fantasize. Lover boy, Dennis and beautiful Bobby, the Midnight Express. Feast your eyes and fantasize. How about that? Going to put Big Bubba in the ring uh, for, uh, I think, the second week in a row here on, of course, Big Bubba's got a match, right, against Ron Garvin. I think I mentioned that. I was looking. I'm looking at my eyes during that rundown right there thinking, did I have a uh, did I have a cheat seat? And I did. I think we taped it right at the bottom of the teleprompter there. Although, I, I mean, we had a teleprompter. I don't know why we didn't take the time to put in a teleprompter to make me look uh, – Looked like I knew what I was talking about. But anyway, so this, uh, this aired on what the 15th of November. You're exactly right. It was taped a few days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was taped on November 9th and, uh, okay. later that day, you guys would do a matinee show in Asheville, North Carolina. The night show was at the Cincinnati gardens, uh, on the 10th, uh, the very next day you're in Greenville, South Carolina. And it was a central state show in Wichita, Kansas that had flair, Tully, Nikita and dusty on top. On the 11th, you did a TV taping in Columbia. On the 13th, you're at the Norfolk Scope. Uh, you're in D.C. on the 14th, Huntington, West Virginia on the 15th, and then we're back here filming TV on the 16th, but that would air on the 22nd. So you are taping ahead of time instead of the same days, and a lot of that is based on sports. Yes. Did you, know, <laughs> did you notice how Bobby was doing, what Bobby was doing there? He would, with this guy, he went to lock up and he backed away. He went to lock up and he backed away again. The third time the guy turned around and says, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> he's fucking with you, son, is what he's doing. So we got really one more TV taping, really, as you were saying, until Starcade. Yep. Wow. Happens quickly, doesn't it? It does indeed. Man, it, it just comes on you quickly. I, I can remember. Hell, it, it seemed like just the other day, you and I were doing the Great American Bash in the summer. I want to and mention, now, um, the reason, or one of the reasons this was pointed out by the mid Atlantic championship podcast at mid Atlantic pod on Twitter. Uh, he says in this day in JCP history, 1986, this is from November 1st, uh, world championship wrestling has given the night off from a first run on WTBS as Notre Dame, who was two and four headed to Baltimore's Memorial stadium to face Navy, who was three and four in front of 61,000 fans. Steve Berline and Tim Brown had big games and the Irish won 33 to 14. So that's the reason that we were missing a day. Okay. Of, uh, of our six Oh five show that we've been sort of wondering, Hey, what happened to that week? Well, there it is. It's preempted because of football. And I'm sure had social media been alive, there'd have been a lot of pissed off wrestling fans, especially about nothing happening below 500 teams. I don't give a damn. Exactly. Well, uh, you know, oh, it's Notre Dame. Yeah, well, they sucked. Yeah, so. well, they still have a quite a following. And uh, speaking of followings, so. look at that guy on the right. He's got match. Could Starcade be the night for him to lose his first? Well, you know, Starcade's going to be the night for Squahoo McDaniel to lose his first wow. Indian strap match. You know, he'll stand out here. And he'll tell the whole nation that he's had over 300 Indian strap matches and never lost a one. But you know, the point is, Wahoo McDaniel has never fought Ravishing Rick Rude. All you got going for you, Red Man, is a little bit of experience. See, the tables are turned towards me. I got the youth, I got the endurance, I got the strength. Squahoo, I'm standing here today looking a whole lot better than you ever looked in your life. And when I walk out, 
of Starcade. I'm even going to look better than I do today, and I'm going to beat you bloody with your own strap, Indian. When I'm through with Wahoo McDaniels, they're going to have to use a squeegee and a sponge to clean him up off the mat. Now, everybody knows about the hair match that's been signed, right? <laughs> I guess we've taken everything Jimmy Valiant has to offer. We've taken his hair, taken his money, we've taken his friends. Now he's got to resort to putting his old lady's hair up on the line. Well, that's just fine and dandy for us because we're going to beat the Indian. We're going to shave Big Mama's head, and we're going to go on home and celebrate Turkey Day the ravishing way. Ravishing Rick Rude, a member of Paul Jones' Army. We'll be right back with the control center. Don't go away. Man, a lot of people debating the whole uh, Braves chant during the World Series. Yeah. And we just saw the the kids in the crown going, ooh. I mean, yeah. Boy, things are a little different. And this looks like we're getting ready to tease the Starcade. We're showing 83 and then 84. I love that 84 just blinks the word million. It just tickles me. <laughs> Yes. Uh, this is our control center because mm -hmm. there's the gathering. Little known story. Tony Schiavone uh -huh. is back with AEW because of the control center bullshit that we did in 2017. Isn't that crazy? Oh, look at that serious look. Schiavone, your host. Starcade vastly approaches the world title match. Ric Flair, Nikita Koloff, the first blood match for the world TV title between Dusty and Tully. Another match on everybody's mind, the Knight of the Skywalkers on the scaffold 20 feet above the ring. Jim Cornette and his Midnight Express had a recent workout on the scaffold. Let's take a look at that workout right now. Now listen, Bobby, look, quit whining, okay? Just quit whining because Mama paid, Mama paid for this scaffold. She paid for this film crew, all these people to be here. Don't make me look like an idiot in front of all these people. And that's the biggest match of all time. We got to be ready. Now you're going to get up there. Just quit whining, okay? Dennis, look out here. Now the camera's over here. Okay, tell me when you're ready. Okay. How do you train for a scaffold match? The Night of the Skywalker, Starcade 86. Well, if you're a coronet, you have your mother buy a scaffold, and then you have them set it up, and you have a film crew come down, because I did what every red-blooded American boy would do and faced with tragedy. I called my mother, and she answered the problem right here. And right now, you people are going to see it. Starcade 86, sure, it looks high, because it is high. It's 25 feet in the air, but that makes no difference, because these men are fearless. Now, get up there, and I want you to work out some strategy. Work out some no. You Right now, right now. Bob, get climb. Bobby. I don't want to go up there, Bobby. Come on, for me. Yeah, Climb the I'm scaffold. This day. Climb the wow. scaffold. Don't worry about it. Climb the scaffold. Okay. Now you see that Bobby, the Midnight Express, the greatest tag team in professional wrestling, climbing the scaffold right now, preparing for Starcade 86, the night of the Skywalkers Road Wars. You may have thought about this match. You may have dreamed it up. You may have tried to hornswoggle us, but in the end, you're going to get hornswoggled. Dennis, Dennis, on up, on up. Go ahead. Bobby, quit whining. Quit whining. Bob, get up there. I don't care. Get up. No, look. It'll, trust me, have I ever lied to you? Have I ever lied to you? Remember this entertaining I've done shit you, here. Very. I've done some things for you I didn't want to do. Now get up there. Damn it, how about that, that's. But keep going. You're almost there. Come on, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to be the greatest thing in professional wrestling. The Road Warriors are going to be finished once and for all because my Midnight Express are going to have a game plan. They're going to have strategy. They're going to be set and ready. And if Bobby, get up there now. Don't make me yell at you. Get up there. You're making me look like an idiot in front of all these people. What's the matter with you? You d keep going, Dennis. Stand up, for heaven's sake! Quit you're whining like an old woman. Bobby, get up there. Come on. D do you want me to look dumb in front of all these people? It's safe, I promise you. Look here. Jeez. See, I'm Bobby, stand up, Dennis. Stand up. They're not going to wrestle you on their knees. It's going to be a fight. Don't hold on to the rail. Stand up. Balance yourself. Y'all are the highest flying team in professional wrestling. Act like it. Don't you realize the road warriors are not going to fight you on their knees. It's going to be a fight. There's going to be pandemonium. Anything's legal. Anything they can tote up on that scaffold, anything we can carry up. You can use it. It don't matter. It's going to be great, but you got to have a game plan. you got to have a strategy. Look here, Bubba's not scared. I'm not scared. Do I look scared to you? All right, now see what was I telling you all along. I just walk across there a couple times, get the feel of it. Ain't nothing to it at all. Holy mackerel, you make all this big commotion and everything. See there? They ain't nothing. Bobby, Bobby, watch it. Wait a minute. Bob Dennis, hold it. Stop. Bobby, shit. Bob. I know how far it is, Bobby, but you got to be fighting them. You got to throw them off. You got to knock them down. You got to be fired up. You hold this, Bubba. Come on, Bubba. Oh, please go up there and help them. You're driving me crazy. Whining like an old woman, Bobby. Watch out. It's shaking. Don't fall. Now, Bubba, go over there in the middle and show them what it's like. 
Show them what it's like when the road wars are up there. Now, guys, you got to have a game plan and a strategy, like I said. Now, you go out there and you fool around with that thing for a minute and you figure out how you're going to knock the road wars off. We'll, we'll get rid of the road wars once and for all. Yes, I care about you guys. Look, I'm not scared. Now, I care about you guys. I really do. You know how much I love you, Bobby. Bobby, stand up. Wait a minute. I'm looking. Hold on. Are you coming up? Let me... Jim right, Cornette so has just put the microphone down, and he's going to make his way up top. Huh. Big Bubba is up top, standing right in the middle, and Jim is making quite the face and hugging it every step of the way after he's just berated his guys, <laughs> and he's literally one step off the mat. Well, there's no it. doubt about it. you got to be prepared for a Skywalker scaffold match. Are the men not expressed? Are they prepared? The Road Warriors are prepared. We know that. Thanksgiving night will tell the tale. Is Dusty Rhodes prepared for the first blood match against Tully Blanchard? Is Tully Blanchard prepared for this match? What about the match for the world heavyweight title? Ric Flair, Nikita Koloff going up against each other for the most prestigious title in all of wrestling. We'll find out Thanksgiving night. Among other things, in the cage for the world tag team title, it's the Rock and Roll Express with their stipulations in the cage going up against Ole and Arn Anderson. Will Paul Jones lose his hair, or will Big Mama lose her hair? We'll find out that Thanksgiving night, as well as maybe new U.S. Tag Team Champions, the Jayhawks, the Kansas Jayhawks, or maybe still live at Kolov and Crusher Khrushchev, and will Wahoo McDaniel lose an Indian strap match? These questions and many others will be answered very, very soon. As the countdown to the big event, Star K-86, the Skywalkers, comes your way Thanksgiving night. Until next time, on the Control Center, I'm Tony Schiavone. We'll see you then. We'll be back with the World Heavyweight Champion, Ric Flair, Dusty Rose, Nikita Koloff, and many more right after college scoreboard. Boys and girls, I know a lot of you just listen to our show and don't actually watch along. Go watch season two, episode 45. That segment was outstanding. And now here's Tony. Tony Savani, do you want to be the first to congratulate me? What for? What for? What's happening to the modern night in St. Louis? The biggest tournament that ever came to that town for the Central States Heavyweight Champion. Everybody's in it. It's an NWA from Dusty Rhodes down to yours truly. And I'm going to win it. You know why? Because I'm the baddest dude alive, Jack. I've told all you rednecks before. I may not be the biggest. I'm certainly the cutest and one of the baddest. And I'm going to be the new champion out there. No, Starcade Daddy. My main man, gorgeous Jimmy's off in Hollywood. He's getting a new robe made so he can walk down that aisle and look gorgeous as ever. And he's going to beat up on Brad Armstrong, right? And I'm going to beat up on that right naked. They're all yelling out for Sam Houston. I don't like him. I don't like nothing about cowboys. I don't even own a pickup truck. And that's what you are, Houston. You're a long-legged drink of water, drive around in a pickup truck. And all them rednecks over there think you're something. Well, you ain't nothing, Daddy. You ain't nothing to the superstar. Anybody that dips snuff drives a pickup truck I don't like. And they're going to them, you know, them bars that they all go in. They got a little low ceilings and the smoke you got to duck to get in them. That's the kind of bar that Rhodes hangs out. That's the kind that you hang at, Houston. Well, I don't like you, Jack. I don't like nothing about you. So do you want to shake my hand now or are you going to wait till tomorrow? I might as well wait. I don't want to, you know, look presumptuous. Well, let me tell you something, brother. If you're going to bet, bet on me. All right, the superstar, Bill Dundee. Let's go back to the ring. Okay. And in the ring, we had- it's Mulkey Mania. Bill and Randy Mulkey. <laughs> Mulkey Mania. <laughs> we had two Jacks, two daddies, and one brother. I mean, it's important to get your brother, Jack, daddy counter out here on the show. Cause you this know, is... that little Elvis, he'll break them out on you. But man, I got to tell you that, that, that scaffold match is arguably the most famous in midnight express history, arguably the most famous in Starcade history. And people have seen that footage so many times it's been discussed over and over and over about how the match was put together. And of course, Jim Cornette's fall and, and his injury on the other side of it and catch you like the cheerleaders and blah, blah, blah. And I've seen that road warrior skip of them yeah. throwing the pumpkins off. Right. I can't tell you how many times, but what we just saw, I don't remember ever seeing that. I may have seen it once, right? But that was tremendous. That was very well done with, with Bobby and, and Cornette. And even it just shows that the heels it, 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 it paints chicken shed heels is what it paints. And, uh, uh, so yeah, it, it's worth watching. It's great. It's, it's a great lead up to, to this event. Hey, by the way, this is, uh, Tim Horner. And I believe this is Robert Gibson's brother, Ricky. Oh, there you go. 
Uh, they called him uh, his name. He went by Ricky Lee Jones, but I wasn't his brother, uh, Ricky Gibson. That's right. Yeah. So I believe this is Robert's brother wrestling here. Not sure, but I think so. Got a nice looking mullet. And if it is the first time we've seen him on TV here in 86. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a good, this is a great time. And I, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I'm watching them climb up the scaffold and looking at that structure in itself, just without all the hoopla and everything. It was a terrible idea. Oh my God. It's the most unsafe piece of shit idea in the history of yeah, wrestling. It is. You see them holding that, that hand railing and it's just right. all rickety. Right. I can't imagine, you know, these guys well over 200 pounds. I mean, Bubba's over the 300 pound mark. Right. And we're just hoping that a guy who we know for sure eats parking lot panties did a good job turning the wrenches. <laughs> I don't want to put yeah. my hands in the life of a guy who sees panties in a parking lot and says, I got to put those in my mouth. Well, he he's all business. He, he can't make my safety decisions. <laughs> Spinning toe hold by Ricky Lee Jones. Look at, look at this. Great move. That right there is something that somebody on AEW needs to use as a finish. That's, uh, that's kind of historic, isn't it? I don't think we've ever seen anything like that. In, I've in only 86. seen one person talk about that move before. And it was yeah. Dr. Tom Pritchard. Wow. Oh, and here we go. A champion of the world. Major boy, Rick Flair, Starcade approaches the match against the Kita does also. And here's a look at the champion. Tony Schiavone, the bottom line is, and I'm no real big patriot by any means, but I like to show the folks what the good old American dollar can do for you. You start right here at about 35,000, you roll over here to about 15,000, then you give them the whole shot right around 2,200 bucks. In other words, when you look at Ric Flair, this is not the only goal that the man possesses. You got to be rich. You got to be like Ric Flair and Jimmy Crockett. You got to know how to style woo, and profile. What I'm building up to, Tony Schiavone, is this. Right now, there's a 275-pound Russian who has attracted the fancy of the American public because they think that he's a big bad man and he can shut this up. Ha! Not a chance. You see, Nikita, what you are right now is a guy who's driving around in a brand new $40,000 car and you got some new clothes. You got all the big things in life, but you know what else you got? You're going soft. That's right. You're going soft. You have become Dusty Rhodes Stooge. That's what you are, Nikita. And you got to walk that aisle. And you with all those big muscles, you remind me of a lot of women I know around this world with full sweaters and nothing up here. You understand what I'm telling you? And I'm going to handle you in the same light. Big boy, you got to beat this. Woo! And I cannot be done. Right, girls? Here's the Slick Rick, the American way of getting things done. Woo! Let's go back to the ring. That was a hell of an interview, in boys. What'd you like best? The old uh, full sweaters and empty heads? I like that. I like him calling Nikita's Dusty Stooge, kind yep. of ripping Dusty right there. I like uh, him uh, <clears throat> talking about all the different things, the how much the ring costs and the Rolex and the suit. A little shout out. What? How about it, girls? Woo! What the good old American dollar can do. I just, I loved it. That was very well done. He was the man. Yeah, man. The fifteen thousand dollar Rolex. How many times did he quote that price to us over the years? I know. By the way, that yeah. Rolex today would be worth a lot more than fifteen thousand. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. How many? <laughs> I don't even know. You know this answer. You probably don't, but. How many of those did he lose? Several. Okay. That's what I thought. He doesn't know the exact amount. He right. would lie and tell you another number, but 
I right, mean, right, I'm right. sure he'd take a be- his best stab at it, but several. Right. I mean, maybe right. the most famous is when he threw a bowl of uh, w- one of his into a bowl of marinara at Sabatino's. Huh. That's on the list. <laughs> and the, he was trying to impress the girls. And he says, what? I got 10 of them at home. Look just like it. Of course mm-hmm. he did not. Yeah. And then the next day he shows up for Thanksgiving, going to eat and get out of town. Megan's in town. She says, dad, I like your new watch. I don't have a new watch. What are you talking about? And I, we've talked about it before that the four horsemen could bring in all the gold after Starcade is over. It's a little bit more than a strong possibility. It's pretty well assured as far as I'm concerned. Yet it does take a little bit of changing of tactics, if you would, for the last couple of weeks in all the matches. We've been going after that leg. We'll admit it. And that hand is vulnerable, too. We've been going after it. He's got that big mitt over his hand. It still packs a pretty good wallop. But underneath it, if you can hit it and stop it long enough, it's going to hurt again. But you see, once you get the first blood at Starcade on Thanksgiving, the knee, the hand are really insignificant. Because in order to win the match, in order to leave the ring, and the new world television champion, we've got to go that extra measure, and we've got to bust somebody open. You know, J.J., Tony Schiavone, you hit it just right. Star K-86 Thanksgiving night, the night the horsemen reign. Ric Flair is going to take Nikita Koloff with some false inspiration and some fan cheers. He doesn't know what he's walking down the aisle for. And Flair's going to walk out with the gold. Dusty Rhodes screaming, hollering, getting in the ring because Jim Crockett forced him to sign a contract that he didn't want to. But Dusty Rose, you're walking that aisle with me, the man that has beat you more times than any living human being. Pins your shoulders down. And then you got the Rock the rock and Roll Express inside that cage against Ole and Arn. The four horsemen are going to walk out with all the championships. And everybody else, tears running down their face, hands hung low, going to walk off in defeat. And that's just what it's going to be. Because, you know, just like Vince Lombardi said, fatigue makes cowards of us all. And you know, the horsemen are training triply hard, four times harder than all the rest. So Dusty Rose, Nikita Koloff, Rock and Roll Express, all the rest. Starcade night, your time is coming and coming real close because you look at those belts, you get all the pictures you can take with them because I tell you what, it's going to be history after the 27th, Starcade 86, the night the horsemen reign. Fans, let's go back to the ring. I like that promo all about the horseman right there. As we see Brad Armstrong and Tony Zane. Yeah. Totally man. So good. No. Oh, yeah, man. He was, um, uh, and I think he was overlooked as a good promo because everybody thought obviously flair and Arn had the better promos, but Tully every bit is good in a, in a different way. Right. No doubt about it. I mean, yeah. I loved his stuff. I, I can't say it enough. Like. I don't know how you can see these old shows and not just be an even bigger fan of mm-hmm. Charlie Blanchard. Well, I agree. And I, I thought the run that he and Dusty had, which obviously was around this time, was some of the better runs. Dust, he gave Dusty great matches. He really knew how to work with Dusty, did Tully. And I and I know there was a lot of heat back then. I know he was he was very vocal, Tully was, about Dusty's booking. Russian leg sweep match is over, but in reality, Dusty loved working with him because Tully knew how to make Dusty look good. Yeah. As great heels would. And Tully was a great heel. What a great Russian leg sweep. And that was the finish. You heard right. A Russian leg sweep when done well. And Brad Armstrong did it better than anybody. And by the way, right. with that beard and hair, he looks just like Kenny Omega, but look who it is. I like about a flair. He tell the people the truth. He said, I got a big mouth. You right, Flair. You got a big mouth. You say Nikita's soft, huh? Let me show you what soft looks like, Flair. I'm going to show you right now. Take a good look, Flair. Take a good look. That look like soft, huh? You know, I figure out how come you wear these, these sunglasses on your face. You hiding the fear in your eyes. From all these people, feel that you know in the back of your mind, Nakita can defeat you. And I'm going to put the Russian signal on you, and I'm going to look down 
And I'm going to say, Flair, how that soft feel. Flair, you are a great champion. And in Starcade, if I can defeat you, that's going to make Nakita a great champion. Rick Flair, I believe that you just got a lesson in how an athlete is supposed to look, you understand? Nikita Koloff, Dusty Rhodes, the superpowers united in this country now. Tyler Blanchett, first blood, Stockade 86, the hottest night in the hottest two towns and the hottest time. The superpowers take it all. First blood, world title, Tyler Blanchett. Just like Ricky Martin once said, if I tell you the roof is going to fall, you better believe it. And if I say I'm going to turn you into a pumpkin, you better believe that too. It's going to be a hot night. I want you dressed and ready to go, Jack. Okay. The superpower, Dusty Rhodes, Rakita Kola, back right after this time. How great was that? I love Dusty. Just I just when, loved him. Just the tone of his voice. Yeah. You just, you can't help but be pulled in. He's such yeah, a right. charismatic person. And speaking of charisma. Well, we have seen on the Starcade Control Center a little bit of fear in your eyes. Oh, no, let me tell you exactly what happened. I'm going to give you the straight story on that. I was upset with that thing. My mother spent a lot of time and a lot of money. And it was edited all wrong. You cut out all the intricate wrestling moves, all the great maneuvers, all the great strategy. My Midnight Express had worked up on the scaffold. Well, I got that footage, and we're going to see it next week. Believe me that. I'm going to get it on the air. That stuff, it was a little shaky at first, but we got everything worked out, and we're ready for the road wars. And I'll tell you who else we're ready for. Ronnie Garvin, a man with the hands of stone. He, you got a piece of tape. Come on. Get the director away. Get the people in the back room awake. I want to see the tape. I want to see. <laughs> I don't think he has any ribs left. Ronnie Garvin, supposedly the toughest man in professional wrestling. Well, here comes the Midnight Express just to soften him up a little bit, but he didn't need no softening up for Big Bubba. Big Bubba Rogers, six foot eight, 350 pounds, and there has never been a man in the history of wrestling 350 pounds that can move like this man, that can do the things that this man can do. Big Bubba Rogers is a disaster waiting for a place to happen. He is the baddest man in the world. He's a man that brushes his teeth with a sand blaster and he shaves with barbed wire. He can't be stopped. He can't be hurt. He can't be beat. And no power on the face of this planet Earth can beat Big Bubba Rogers in a Louisville street fight because that's his kind of thing. Starcade 86, the Skywalkers, the street fight. All my men are coming out on top. Let's go back to the ring. And here comes Ravishing Rick Rude taking on Paul Garner. Paul Garner looks like an IT professional. He's here to get your ethernet. Good to go. I don't know if you noticed, but it hit me like a ton of bricks, but as Bobby would fuck around with me and David all the time, he was drawing on our, on our formats. What was he writing? He, do you think? He, I, I don't, I think he, if, if I recall, and I maybe God, I don't know. I may be wrong, but if I recall, he would just draw goofy pictures on our formats with the the big flare that we had the back, the black big flare. And how much would they be worth today? Well, I thankfully you, you've learned a lesson and you've kept all of your AEW ones, right? Yes, I have. So the big cash in is coming. <laughs> don't know if it ever come or not. Cause oh, I don't yeah. know if kids these days are going to be in 30 years. Like, uh, you guys are now Chris, we'll Chris Shivani sold some old bullshit, Georgia bulldog thing autographed by you on eBay. And you're wondering if he's going to dig through your archives and find your old formats. Here's what you should be doing right now. Start getting guys to sign it every week. Not all of them, but you know, this one's signed by MJF. That one's signed by sting. This one's signed by Darby. What have yeah, you? They'd, they'd catch on. No. So what? Mama Snickers. Back here again. You know, you people haven't seen enough of me today, Tony Schiavone. Uh, and if right. this guy over here, Bubba, if this guy over his pumpkin head one more time, I want you to go over there and I want you to show him the true reasons and true meaning behind life, if you know what I'm saying. Now, let me say something about Starcade 80s. Oh, the pumpkin head. I can't even concentrate with these people screaming pumpkin head. Do you realize it's been like that all over the country? The road wars are responsible for it. All these people around here are perpetuated. Let me tell you something, road wars and Paul Ellering. Everybody's now seen just exactly what that scaffold's going to look like. It's going to look the same way going up on the floor of that Omni as it did in that tape. And believe me, brother, 
When you get up there, when you get your two stupid pukes up there, you're going to look down and you're going to realize what could possibly occur in a match like that. And then you're going to look at the other end of that scaffold and there's going to be the Midnight Express. And I don't know whether they're going to have a load of bricks on their back, whether they're going to have big clubs. I don't know what they're going to have, but they're going to have something. They're going to be ready for those road words because if you think for one second that I would let my men, my most prized possession, my cherished friends, the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life, if you think that I'd let them go into a situation like this with the road wars unprepared, then you people are crazy. Road wars, I promise you this, they say the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Well, in a match like this, one wrong move, one bad step, and brother, it's not only the end of career, it's the end of everything. It's the end of life. So you remember what I'm saying, the Midnight Express are going to be prepared, and I don't care what we have to do. It's not going to be the Midnight Express that comes off that thing. It's going to be the Road Wars. And when they fall, they're going to make a dent in that cement big enough to bury an elephant in because that's exactly what they are. Two big, fat, stupid, swolled up, lumped up elephants, and they're going to get what's coming to them for trying to get my men involved in something like this. And Ronnie Garvin, you belong to Big Bubba Rogers' Starcade Night. It's going to all going to happen, and my men are going to be the greatest thing that anybody's ever seen. Okay, Jim Cornette and his Midnight Express. Don't forget to join us next Sunday night, 7.05, World Championship Wrestling Sunday Edition. I'm Tony Shabon. It's hard mm. to believe we're just one away, man. Right. We're just one away from Starcade. And man, we've still got uh we've still got a little bit of time to kill, you know? Yes, yes, we do. Make up Terry Boatwright right at the end there. Marlena, wife of the natural to be, I, you oh. go back to these shows and uh, again, I just, I, I know wrestling's changed. I, I get that. But I, just, I hear the butt hanging, but, but, but you still have to be able to talk to draw money. Yes. Or you, you have to be able to talk. Yes. I don't know why we don't. I mean, John Moxley gives great promos. The, uh, I, I like what Don Callis and Kenny Omega do. And, and obviously Eddie Kingston, Eddie Kingston's the goat. Eddie Kingston's the yeah. man, but yeah. you're, 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 uh, I just, you're an MJF apologist. You also like MJF and he sucks. Everybody listening to this knows that he's just not a good person. No, he's not. I don't care. I, he's I, a he's, rotten he's, human being rotten. He's a, he's a turd and I don't care how great of a, a promos he does, which he, I'm not going to even give him credit. No, of course not. Cause he's just yeah. awful. He sucks yeah. at everything. Yeah, he does. But you still got to be able to talk. And I just, man, I don't know. I, I know people have gotten better through time. I, I know that by practice, but I also think that you either can or you can't. Right. As good a worker as Tim Horner was, he couldn't do a promo. Brad Armstrong was okay at it. A tremendous worker. Flair and Arn and Cornette and Dusty and Tully. Those guys were Rick Rude we just saw. Rick, although Rick kind of, didn't Rick always look like he was like kind of, he always talked like he was kind of tired to me. Like, we well, probably hey, was. Hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, he was just kind of like low, low key in a way. Wait, Rick who? Rude. Oh, yeah. I thought you were saying flair for a minute. I'm no, like, no, what? Rick, he's Rick out there Rude. hooting and hollering. Yeah. And I'm talking ravishing Rick Rude. He always kind of was like, I don't know if it was cool or, or what, but Rude was good. Obviously Shaska was great. And, um, Magnum was tremendous. Those guys, that's how they drew the money. They talked. It wasn't because of a great work rate. Although many of them were tremendous as we know, but I just think the, the art of doing a promo has kind of gone bye-bye. And you're sad about that? Yeah. Cause that's what I, that's what we watch things for. When, when I was a fan of mid Atlantic championship wrestling in the seventies, I didn't watch it for the matches. I watched it for the interviews, the angles. I watched it for, I really watched it for the two segments, one for baby face, one for heel of mid Atlantic Ch and now here's middle Atlantic championship wrestling coming to your area, man. That's where we watched. That's what we were there. Wanted to see him come to our area. And, and so it's all changed now because it's a TV show now and you watch it.
to come back and watch the great matches on the TV shows and the angles or whatever. I, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm just lamenting on days gone by. I don't know. But I go back and I look at, I mean, yeah, three times a cornet is enough, but they're all three of them are good. They're all three good promos. Flair, tremendous, just, oh, well. There you go, my friend. That's what I think about that. Well, we, uh, now you and I have a big challenge set up for ourselves. <laughs> oh, I love challenges somewhat. Well, next week we should keep the train going and we should, we should go ahead and, and watch November 22nd. Right. But then I say, we pause the f- watch along format for a minute. Okay. We throw out the format for a minute. All right. And we have a very special guest or two or three or what have you for the week before Starcade. Uh huh. And then I think as your Thanksgiving day tradition continues, which means by the way, well, maybe yeah, we could do us. We'll still do it on Wednesday. Yeah. But, uh, as you're getting we'll just... ready, you're brining in the Turkey. Mm-hmm. You can watch it with us. Yeah. On Starcade 86. Uh, so- the week of the 22nd, it'll drop uh, for Patreon on the 22nd, everybody else on the 24th. Yeah. So you're, you're talking about the weekend of the 15th of November through the 17th. Uh, that's when we should have, we should break away from the norm. Yes. And, you know, just so you know, Arn Anderson, Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, Rick Flair, Nikita Koloff, Paul Ellering, Dennis Condry, Jim Cornette, Tully Blanchard, J.J. Dillon, Ron Garvin. Boogie Woogie, Bill Dundee. Uh, I'm just saying, Crusher Khrushchev, Dutch Mantel. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Garvin. A lot of different guys were on this show that we could pull from. Uh huh. And I have a lot of their numbers. Okay. Then here's an idea. Oh, Baby Doll, too. I didn't mention her, but. Yeah. Okay. And she kind of no showed us one time, didn't she? She's got a good story what? she wants to tell. You're burying her unnecessarily. I'm not burying her unnecessarily. I'm just asking, didn't she do a no show on ad free shows? And if somebody does a no show, do you go back to that well once again? So I'd like to hear a story. I always did love Nicola. But my I was just throwing a question out there. You know. You know, no shows are bad for business. Well, I was trying to have fun here and you brought us to a screeching no. halt. So no, here's no, the no, keys. No. You, you do your thing and I'll, I'll no, nod. No, 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 no. Let me ask you this. You have a lot of telephone numbers. Yeah. Why don't you give them to Dave Silva and ask Silva to set these people up for us? Well, the question is, who do we want? Well, I was looking to make a wish list. I can tell you don't want baby doll, which is rude and hurtful. No, no. No, it shouldn't be rude and hurtful. I tell you who we, sh- who I would like to get. <laughs> I'll think of it here in a minute. Here's the thing: the idea okay. is, boys and girls, in two weeks, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about 1986 with probably multiple folks, and we haven't booked it yet, but we know we can because, candidly, we got it like that. So we'll grab, we'll grab a couple of guests. We'll have a little bit of fun, but I think when it comes to watching 1986, we go back to the well and we call our old pal and see if Mr. David Crockett is available to watch 1986 with us one more time. You're talking about having him for Starcade? Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I think that'd be great. I think it will be a lot of fun right? and, uh, you know, the proper way to celebrate your Thanksgiving. So. Between you and I, let's try to do the old one, two punch. See if we can make your, make him, you know, come around to our way of seeing things, if you will, by the way, it's worth mentioning this year, Starcade, it's a big one, 16,000 folks in Greensboro at the Coliseum. It's a sellout and Atlanta has 14,000 people in the Omni. So there's 30,000 people who were watching Starcade 86 in person plus closed circuit locations. In Columbia, South Carolina, which sold out Charleston, West Virginia, Kansas city, Missouri, Jacksonville, Florida, Cincinnati, Ohio, Norfolk, Virginia, 
Charlotte, North Carolina and Albany, Georgia, which is wow. pretty awesome. When you think about all those different locations, I mean, this was just gangbuster business, man. It, uh, was ahead of its time. It really, really was. I'm surprised that Spartanburg didn't get some as well. And maybe Greenville, South Carolina, those locations, but I guess they thought maybe they can make their way on down to Atlanta to see it. I don't know, but yeah, it was, uh, it was quite an event. And then of course, then the following week, the following year, we took Starcade out of the South, didn't we? Yep. We 87 killed it all, daddy. Yep. It did. I, it, the movement didn't kill it all, but it certainly didn't help it going to Chicago, the UIC pavilion that year, which obviously we'll get to eventually, but yeah, we're talking about the last of the good old days in many ways. Just how things evolve. Wrestling evolves. Wrestling changes. Are Sorry, you, am I bringing you, you down again? <laughs> it feels like you're getting sad a little. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sad of. I'm sad of the way it used to be. I really am because I remember how much I remember. I really remember this. I remember how damn much passionate and how much love I had of mid Atlantic championship wrestling in the seventies. And then when, after, after I graduated from college and I started my career and in, in baseball, I kind of, I st- I stayed with a little bit, but not as closely. Cause I was, my life had changed, but I remember my college days, my high school days, Jesus was that fun. And of course they are chronicled on butts and seats, just how much I loved it. And I miss the old days, so there you go. And you know, nostalgia is quite an elixir. And and buddy, if you can't get enough of Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling, let me plug once again MidAtlanticGateway.com. It's an unbelievable job that they do over there. Um, Dick Bourne and friends have put together. I don't know. It's got to be the definitive. I mean, don't you think? I mean, I can't think of a bigger, better nothing, Jim Crockett site than that one nothing close to it, really nothing close to it. So, Hey, which reminds me of, of old school stuff. Are they having any time soon? Anytime next year, are they having, are you going back and having a cauliflower alley club? Yeah, they do a cauliflower I, alley every year. Well, I, I know the, I know the, uh, I know COVID, you know, kind of spanked everybody, but I, and I'm a lifetime member. I saw the last, uh, I saw the last episode or the last, uh, issue just, that they sent out. They just did one, uh, last two months ago, September. Yeah. I saw that one. I think that was the last appearance of uh, Reggie parks. Yeah. But hey, you want to go next year? Well, I'd like to, but it's usually on a Wednesday, right? Well, yeah. are you saying you got something to do that day? Sure do. Oh, AEW dynamite soon to be on TBS. But now do you, do you think you'll be on that next year? I'd like to think so. Okay. You, do I, you, do you know something I don't know? No, I just know how long your deal is. And I figured it's probably coming up and they're probably tired of your bullshit. You know? No, no, I got an extension on there. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, so you didn't tell me the good news. Yeah. Mm. You knew all about it. I thought for sure you were going to show up at ring of honor. Uh, really? Yeah. Really? Show up Sinclair in their front front, uh, in their lobby. Yeah. I thought for sure it would be you on a sound Ian, stage. Ian Riccoboni, Riccoboni. You're out of the loop. Aren't you? No. Yeah. That, that yes. Kind of. I thought that, uh, they're, that they're just going to show old tapes, right? Yeah. That's why I said they would bring you out. It was a joke. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe well, not, what a, not a very good one. What's but. Tony Schiavone doing in the impact zone? Ain't gonna happen, buddy. You gonna you gonna do ML, some MLW shows. Maybe. Oh, some GCW. That's what you want. By the way, I'm doing, I'm doing, Hey, let, let me be very, let me very, be very blunt. I'm doing AEW motherfucker. And if, if that ain't available, then I'll go back to doing something else. Like I did for 18 years, including podcasting. Why, why are you motherfucking me? 
Because again, you bullshit stuff out there. That's not true. Oh, wait, wait, people wait, wait. Be, People could be online saying Shivani's not coming back to AEW next year. True or false. You signed a three-year deal when he first signed up. That's right. So I was just, you know, doing my country math and in my head, yeah. your deal would be up, right. but I didn't know yeah. you signed an extension. How am I supposed to know you've yet to pay me my agent fee. Now, <laughs> one time have I gotten my agent fee. You know what? I knew that was coming out pretty soon in this conversation. Oh, that you, that you owe me money. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I, I said, we just square it up. You just give me that six man tag belt and you can keep my goddamn commission. Okay. Well, get yourself a mask. One of those, uh, burglar masks. Yep. Get yourself a hammer. Yeah. And break into Petco park. You, you reckon if there was a 400 pound burglar who stole a belt that's been bragged about on this show for three years, nobody would think it was me. No, but you're Conrad Thompson. You could talk your way out of it. I'm trying to talk my way into it right now. Well, you know what? Uh, Here, here's what I need you to do. You wearing, you got, you got your glasses on like you like it. I want you to take them off. Shine them up real good. Get the smudges off. Make sure you can. See through them clearly. There you go. Doing a good job. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then what I want you to do is stick them up your ass. <laughs> see if you can write your ass. See if your ass. I'll get it out. See if you see yourself writing me a check, you motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't seen your ass not writing out one check. Yeah. You need my fucking PayPal? You need my wiring <laughs> instructions? You got Venmo? I take cash, motherfucker. <laughs> now, dude, I'm so excited that you're back. I, I do wonder how much longer we're going to be able to keep doing this because it feels like try as he might Eric Bischoff can't help, but try to pick fights on his podcast now. Wow. I don't know that story. Who's he picking fights with now? No, nah, he's just being critical of some decisions that are made in a W and I know that it's not, you know, I don't think he's coming from a bad place, but in this clickbait era where we live. I don't know if you know that you saw, but somebody circulated a fake quote that was attributed to Eric that said something I, like, Oh, I wish I could reboot WCW and show that Tony Khan's not a genius. He's just lucky, but it's like, he never said that anywhere, but wow. it went, it went super viral and I started getting tagged in it. So I sent it to Eric. I'm like, did you do an interview? He's like, no, that's made up. I've never seen that before or said that in my life. That's not how I feel. And it's like, yeah. golly. That, uh, did we ever find the person who started that? Of course we didn't. We couldn't. No, I didn't look for it, but I I mean, I keep seeing it on my Facebook feed, which is why I stopped logging into Facebook, but I'm like, what, what in the world? Yeah. Leave it alone. Like shit on Eric for the good stuff. You know, (laughs) you fucked up the finish to start gate 97. That's enough to make it unforgivable. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, what is all this nonsense? He didn't say that cancel him for stuff. He did. By the way, uh, you, you've, we've done this whole show yeah. on the heels of Halloween and you have yet to bring up your Halloween costume. I did not dress up for Halloween. Why not? I was at a C4. So I was, oh, so nobody Jerry, there was in costume. Nobody there was in gimmicks. No, a lot, cos- lot of costumes, especially, uh, you know how they do during comic cons. They, a lot of, uh, cosplay. Why wouldn't you have done that? Uh, I'm just kind of not into it. How was your Halloween party, by the way? Well, thanks for asking. It was great. Good. At the Connor Radisson? No, we had it at a, uh, I rented at the a boot. I rented at a the restaurant. Boot? The restaurant okay. was closed, but they restaurant. No, I'm trying to say it like you do. We, okay. we rented a restaurant like you, uh, would enjoy. And we had it catered and they made all of your favorite dishes and they couldn't, mm-hmm. they knew Cassio was coming. So we had a, a vat of mashed potatoes, which is his favorite. Mm-hmm. Had some pizza, had some wings, had some deviled eggs, had some hors d'oeuvres of various. Anyway, we also had an open bar. Wow. Which is always a hit mm-hmm. party started at seven. I left at two and people were, uh, not even close to stopping. Uh, I I was told that Cassio woke up for work the next day at three in the afternoon. It's (laughs) worth mentioning. He hosts a morning show (laughs) that goes six to 10 and he woke up at three in the afternoon. 
and as you and I are recording this, mm-hmm. um, people have really liked the Halloween photo of myself and my tag team partner. Did you see our costumes? No, I, I did. Of course I don't watch social media, so I did not see it. Okay. Well, I'm going to, uh, send you a picture right now on your phone okay. All right. and let you sort of break it down. Mm-hmm. Give us your two cents. See what you thought. All right. This should be good. I think it will be. Mm-hmm. This probably should be great. So there you go. You should have at any moment now. And as you're looking at it, you'll be the 652,349th person to see it. Wow. That's pretty fucking cool. I mean, that's pretty spot on there. I thought that is the Dudley boy spot on. Yeah. So, uh, I've already got next year's picked out. Ready yeah. to go. Ready to go. Okay. You want to divulge or is it going to be a big secret? I'm going to be a keen, the African dream. I'm surprised you haven't done that before. And, but here I have, but I did it with a low rent homemade costume. Oh, you put some money into this one. I've got a, uh, I've got a person who makes professional wrestling costumes that you see Mm -hmm. on TV every week. Right. And they're making my Akeem and they're going to make Dre. Who's my Devon Dudley in the photo. Mm -hmm. They're going to make him my slick. That's pretty fucking cool. We've got another fellow around these parts. He's going to be the big boss man and we will be the twin towers. And all we need is television's Tony Schiavone. Okay. So if Tony Schiavone is alive next Thanksgiving, well, well, I hope, I hope we're doing Halloween next Halloween. Sorry. If Tony's alive next Halloween, then, and not signing autographs somewhere, maybe he'll show up. Why would you be signing? Are you doing another colored pencil book? Uh, it's a graphic novel. But it'll be done. Term. It'll it'll be dead by then, right? I know, but who knows? I, maybe I'll start another one. Who knows? Maybe I'll do this graphic novel about this guy who is a wrestling announcer by day and superhero by night. And he's got a tattoo of a dog on his left arm, and, and he's got echelon in his basement, and he's got mm-hmm. a wife with a hose h- h- stuck up her ass. Yes, and he uh, a full head of hair thanks to Keeps. Let me ask you Mm -hmm. if Lois kept the hose in, but like, let's say the hose was still in there, but she detached it from the stuff. If she was just walking through the house and there's a hose, right? We're desperately at, hang on, hang on, hang on. (laughs) Would that be a dookie shoot? Was that what we would call it? Like, instead of a laundry shoot, it would be a dookie shoot. What about a dookie shoot? I think dookie shoots that's would that, get over. That's not that. That's not that type of hose that they use. They use a camera. Oh, I don't know that I want to see that. It's not. It's not. It's not. A, I never knew you to be a speculum kind of guy, type of guy. <laughs> I, I saw a, a clip of that once and had to double click right off. I was okay. like, "What am I? I'm gone too far." Just to be clear, Lois had a colonoscopy, like you do. When you're up in age and everything's fine. I don't Thank think you, you had asking. to do that anymore. I thought you just shit in a cup and shipped it off and they could just look at your shoot shit. No, but yeah, by the time they look at your shoot shit and they find something in it, it's too late. So you should have a camera stuck up your ass to just make sure there's no, nothing bad up there. And when was the last time you got busted open? Uh, about a year ago. Really? Yeah. What was his name? Fella who, fella who beat it out for you. No, it's. No, I mean, you know, put the camera in and the whole thing. That's a dirty job. Yeah, that is it. I don't know. I, they sent me to the, I went to the Emory hospital. They sent me into their place there and they said, uh, we're going to give you some Mr. Shivani. We're going to give you some, uh, this chalky shit to drink. No, not chalky shit to drink. Um, uh, we're going to put you under and you got some anesthesia. Thank you. That's the word I was Give you some anesthesia. And by the time they got anesthesia out there, I was gone. Wow. So I don't know who was up there. Do you always fall asleep real fast after? 
after uh, like after when you're hanging out with Rebel or whatever. Yeah. I mean, do you fall asleep no. right after? No, no. You're again. You're uh, you are. I mean, from drinking, like you go drinking. Yeah, no, you're Rebel. you're a fucking lie. So okay, you don't drink with Rebel on the road. I'm just wanting to make no, sure. I, I've I've stopped. Oh, okay. So you're going to quit drinking? Or just yes. quit hanging out with Rebel. Quit. I got to stop hanging out with Rebel. I got to stop hanging out with anybody on, uh, and just need to focus on the show. The show. Oh, you feel like you were getting distracted? No, it's just. No, I just want to focus on the show. Did you get in trouble at home? Did not get no. Didn't get trouble. Home. She get in trouble at home. I don't think so. Oh, you don't know. You think that lady in the tramp picture got her some big heat at home? And I don't know. Oh, I don't know which. I don't know what you're talking about. Damn, sore subject. Well, let's talk about something that's not sore. Something that's injured. Something that's okay. fractured. Okay, something that's that? broken and needs our attention, needs our affection, needs our love. What is that? Man down. Mance Horner has injured himself. Really. Broken, broken, broken. I originally thought it was an ankle. Turns out it's the leg. He's going to be down for months. Well, you do that crazy shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. He didn't do what are you talking about? He well, got hurt before shit he, he got hurt before he got in the ring. Really? He, he didn't take his jacket off. He didn't do like a six thirty through a flaming table, you motherfucker. What would, would, would he would he slip on some ice? I don't know. Why, why does Lois hobble? Is she doing a bunch of planches? Like shit just <laughs> happens, man. I don't know. So, so, so how did he hurt this leg? If it wasn't in the ring, did he tell you how he hurt his he leg? Was on the way there? to the ring in a show, uh -huh. something happened. Okay. He's hurt. Anyway, I'm saying all that to say, mm -hmm. we're going to try to, uh, find a way to keep his name out there here on adfreakshows.com. Good. And, uh, our little group chat's got him a care package coming. And oh. I'm sure if you just throw a Google machine, there's some opportunities to help a fallen brother. Cause you know, he just, he just recently got released from his MLW deal. Did not know that and he was all excited thinking about, Hey, what can I do next? And fucked up his leg. And now he's down for the count. So, so basically he's, uh, he shivani himself. Really? Which means he tried his hardest, but it just didn't work out. That's exactly right, Tony. Thank you. So I'm hoping I can sprinkle a little dust on him. Sprinkle a little dust. On him. So. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I think we need to have him as a guest spot here every now and again. Okay. Watch some that's old, fine. old WCW. That's fine. Cause you know, he loves WCW. Well, as most people do years later, he loved it back then too. He didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? He wasn't backstage then. Well, I'm talking about little kids. We didn't know any better. Oh yeah. No, he didn't know. We thought that yeah. whole, you know, white castle of fear shit was awesome. Then we grew up and we're like, what the fuck were we watching? <laughs> oh, I knew it back then. Well, cause you're a fucking super genius. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yes. No, I'm not. Anything else you want to talk about? Well, I was hoping you gave me, you were going to give me something here. No, Anything you I want to mention know. about the Braves or whatever? Uh, hopefully by the time, uh, this drops, they have, by the time you're listening to this, wherever you are, that they have won their world series. I say that because of how, how much I like Brian Snicker and then Freddie Freeman. Who else uh, was on the team that I was teams? Acuna was there. Of course, Acuna's not playing, but uh, a lot of those guys. Acuna is going to make some doll hairs, though. Yeah, and uh, but, and he's getting a ring either way. Yeah, I uh, hopefully. Why wouldn't he? And, and Austin. Uh, well, you know how Braves fans are. They're like Georgia Bulldog fans. They're like, this could be our year. And, oh, we did it again. So hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Well, you and I are recording on a Tuesday. They're playing the night. Right. Game six. They win. It's over. 
If not, they got to go to a game seven on Wednesday night. That'd be tomorrow. So as, as everybody's listening to this in theory, game seven will be tonight. What do you think? I think they'll win it. I think they'll win it tonight, but I won't be watching. You're not going to watch either one. No. Why not? Don't like baseball on TV. Don't enjoy baseball on TV. Why not? Just don't. If you've seen a, a many, you've seen so many live games like I've seen throughout the years, live games, thousands, thousands of live games. TV just does not do it for you. Does not do it for me. I'm so glad that Fox has a two man booth because I thought the three man booth in baseball was just too much because I think the game more than any other sport needs to breathe, needs to breathe and needs to not have a lot of commentary. And I don't want to see endless OPSs. I don't want to see exit wounds or exit velocities. <laughs> I, I I don't it just I, I I don't give a shit. So I and I like I've brought this up before as a baseball fan when I sit down to watch a baseball game I want to be able to look around because it's such a wide open game with so many things going on and watch what I want to watch instead of a director who probably doesn't know shit about baseball to begin with have a cameraman stick the camera lens up the nose of the pitcher to create drama. I don't want the director to tell me what to watch in the baseball game. I want to watch what I want to watch in the baseball game. Football, I get it. It's right there. Basketball, it's right there. Not baseball. You're looking at two people of nine in the field. So, no. Well, if it does go to game seven. Yeah. In Houston. Yeah. I just found, and this might be interesting to you. I know Uh it's a Wednesday night and I know you're supposed to be at TV, but hear me out since you won't watch it on television. What if you decided to actually attend the game No, at seven Oh nine PM at minute Maid park in Houston, Texas. Yeah. Home game four series game seven. Mm -hmm. I found four tickets. That's four tickets. One, two, three, four. All right. And, uh, the section known as diamond club, a right behind home plate. Yeah. And the tickets are just a hundred thousand dollars each. <laughs> now they do have a fulfillment fee of $2 per ticket. Wow. <laughs> which is really going to jack it up. Yeah. Then they've got tax. Yeah. Of ten thousand forty four dollars and fifty four cents per ticket. Yeah. So forty thousand in tax. Plus StubHub needs their service fee, which is twenty one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars per ticket. So a, a measly eighty four grand in um and convenience fee. So our total, and I just need you to say go and I'll click buy now. Five hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars, one hundred and eighty-six bucks. The people or persons who buy that should be taken out back and beaten with a stick. It's not a good. Is that not a good place to watch a game behind home plate? No. Oh, I didn't know that. It's not. Where's the best place? Best place is up about halfway behind the dugout. You okay. see the speed of the, you see the speed of the pitch. Uh, you can see the entire game. You can see what's going on in the on deck circle. You can see it's just, that's the best place to watch a game. All right. I found us some different ones. These are dugout box one fourteen, row 18 seats, 13 through 16, four tickets. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's on the aisle too, which is good. Cause I know you got a little pee bladder. And I grabbed these for us for just $12,392 each total. No. 
I'm not going. I would not go. I'm telling you this right now, honestly. If there was not a wrestling show on Wednesday night from Kansas City, all right? And if there was, I wouldn't take free tickets. I wouldn't take free tickets. Do you realize, do you realize the other night, and Chris sent me this text, the game started the other night. This is game five. The game started at 8.08, 8, 808 Eastern time. One hour and 40 fucking minutes later, they were only in the fourth inning. Do you know why that is? They were hitting a lot of, uh, hitting no, a lot of balls. it's because of Fox TV and long commercial breaks and all this bullshit. They got in, got to get in after they come back from a commercial break. You realize that we started our show with 19 commercials today. I know. Now you're fussing about it. Yes. I'm fussing about elongating the game. Well, we elongated our podcast. Well, but, but what I'm saying is, is that baseball, it base, they're so disingenuous. How so? Because they say we need to speed up the game. Here are some rules to speed up the game. Oh, really? Cut your commercials times. If you want to speed up the game. Well, uh, hang on now. Would that mean that all the players and coaches or whatever are cool with making less money too? I'm just asking. They're not. Well, then wh- what I, what I'm saying is don't talk about speeding up the game. Don't bullshit yourself and saying you're going to speed up the game of baseball. You're not let it be what it is. Don't go out there and say umpires. You got to go fast. We got to, we can't have uh, like, for instance, uh, when they, they do intentional walks now. You don't have four pitch. You don't have to pitch to them because they want to speed up. Well, it, it means fucking nothing. It means fucking nothing. The people who run baseball are the biggest fucking idiots in the world. Give me the old days. Sorry. You're mad about them walking guys. I'm mad about the, I'm mad about them pretending that they want to speed up the game. When in, in fact, you want to speed up the game. Don't, uh, don't have uh, don't have the umpires put a headset on and talk to New York about the call. Do you want to speed up? They don't really don't want to speed up the game. They want you to think they are, but they really don't want to. They're just disingenuous people. They are. Does that go back to uh, Bud Sealing, or? Yeah, is- probably. Yeah. I thought you probably hated him. Yeah. He seemed like a oh, nice I, guy. I did. I- Remember the all-star game that was tied and they had no more players left. And he shook, he said, I, I, he came down there and made sure he was shaking his head. I, I don't know what we can do. I mean, I don't know. What, I know what we can do. Get a fucking commissioner knows what the fuck he's doing. That's what we can do. Well, that escalated. Anyway, that's my thought on that game, which is no longer part of my life. So there you go. And yeah, here you are getting fired up about it. I just said, Hey, Tony, aren't you excited about the Braves and look at you go just the venom. I'm excited about, you got to get back a rebel. You've, you've become, no, 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 no. No, See, you got this all wrong. I mean, y'all broke up. Was it ugly? We didn't break up. It's not ugly. No, it's not what you think. We just happened to go out to dinner together with a bunch of other people. And you're not doing that anymore. A group of friends. No. Uh -uh. Is this because, uh, well. Never mind. No. It was my decision. Well, I didn't say you got dumped. It's my decision. I wonder if we should like. What? We need to do like a benefit for you or something. No, we don't. Hell, you did a benefit for me. (laughs) It's called podcast. Benefit from my daughter's wedding. (laughs) That's good enough. I, I just feel bad. I mean, you had so much fun. You shouldn't. I feel like we should play like a s- sad song now. No, we shouldn't. We're fine. Everybody's good. This one goes out to you, Rebel. 
Don't play too much of it. Steve Kaufman to get pissed. I'm just saying. That was the. I don't. Know, I know you don't recall, but that was the song they played when Ric Flair retired. Really? Yeah. Is that when when they when they showed uh, Shawn Michaels say I'm a sorry and kick him in the face? <laughs> Type deal. I love you just brass tacks that so well. Is that when Shawn Michaels said I'm sorry and they kicked him in the face? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. That was the same weekend. Same weekend. All right. No good. <laughs> That's I. You know, when you think about Rick Flair's retirement, I remember him getting kicked in the face by Shawn Michaels. I love you, Tony. <laughs> well boys and girls that's going to do it we greatly appreciate the uh, opportunity to come on and chop it up with you this week it's been a lot of fun uh talking about 1986 we're going to be back next week talking about the 22nd which is essentially the go home episode of tv before we get to the big pay-per-view then we'll take a, a, a real quick detour and have a very special guest or two talk about all the great things that happened in 1986 and then, uh, the very special day that we've all been waiting for. It seems so far away when we first started this journey, Starcade 86 Thanksgiving week coming your way right here on what happened when Tony right now feels like it's about that time. It is about the time Conrad Thompson. And no, I did not break up with rebel. No, there's no problems. No. What are you th thinking about? Because I'm desperately out of time. And so are my relationships. We'll see you next time on what happened when we come to you Wednesdays on the Cumulus Podcasting Network. On Mondays, we come to you only on Patron. Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And of course, adfreeshows.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. <laughs>